Hi there, I recently fitted this double anti-flood valve to the waste system from my house. This video shows you how I did it. I've just dug a hole in my back garden. It's 1.5 meters deep. I've done it to expose this six inch sewer pipe that leaves my house. And it leaves just after this chamber where all the pipes come into it from the different parts of the house. And about a month ago, we had loads and loads of rain and the water was going the wrong way. So the water should be going this way, out of the house, but it was coming this way, back into this chamber. And luckily the cellar didn't get flooded, but only just about. It was about two inches off coming into the cellar. So we've dug this big hole and we're gonna put in this thing here. This is a non-return valve. If you look down into it, it has these flaps two flaps so it's a double valve with a rubber seal on them. Normally they're closed but if water's flowing from this other side water's flowing from this side it pushes the flap open and the water can escape and it pushes this flap open and the water can escape but if there's water flowing back it just pushes against the valve door and the water can't get back up. So I've exposed the pipe, it took about four to six hours of digging, a meter and a half deep and it's roughly a meter square, it's a little bit off a meter long, meter wide, meter and a half deep. I'm going to cut that pipe down there, and fit this valve in and put, use a slip connector to join it up. Now I'm down in the hole with the pipe and the valve I've got to cut out a piece of the pipe to get the valve to fit but because I can't move either end of the pipe to fit the pipe on and then slide the next piece on I've got to use a thing called a slip coupler a thing called a slip coupler which is just a piece of pipe sleeve that doesn't have a ridge in the center so you can slide it down slide it down onto a piece of pipe and slide it back up so I've marked up where I need to cut I'm going to do this with a little angle grinder. So the pipe is going to go, the pipe's going to be cut here, so it'll, it'll sit exactly where it's sitting here. And on this end, I've marked this, but this is wrong, because to get the pipe into that position, I have to bring it as far as here, and then slide it back. So I've marked it to there, which is the minimum amount of pipe I can get away with cutting. So what I've done here is, with the angle grinder, because I can't get it the whole way around, I've cut out little sections halfway through and I should be able to get the angle grinder in there then to finish up the cut and do a nice neat job. So that will fit the base. Right. Little grinder. Little grinder. So I've got clay all trimmed out, the pipe gone. I've used the angle grinder to make a little lick all around, a little chamfer on the edge, so that the couplers and the new pipe sleeve slides over. I'm gonna give this a wipe down with the damp cloth, to make it a bit cleaner so that everything goes together. And I've got a bottle of silicone lubricant and I'll lube it all up really well. And we should just be able to slide it together. So the coupler's got to go on first, as far back as it can. So get some lube on. Put loads on because it's got to go on and come back. You want to make sure that the pipe was clean first because any dirt might foul up your rubber ring seals. Loads and loads of this stuff. Put a little smear in here as well. If that chamfer and everything works, it should just slide on. There it is. So 
that's that one back as far it's going to get stuck on the second seal and it won't go on there so it should just pull back now whenever i go to do it so let's put some silicone on this end thank you so the flaps you should be able to see the silver flap if you look in if you can't you're doing it the wrong way around Set in. So back here. So, double valve fitted. Happy days. Clearly autumn, the hole has got leaves in the bottom of it. Yesterday morning I put a bit of concrete just underneath the, the valve and the slip collar to stop anything sliding around. It's about halfway underneath, it just gives it a bit of a bed. What I didn't say before was that these little red handles on top of the valve. You can flip them up and it locks the valve shut if you ever had some kind of an emergency that you wanted to do that. I'm four rings up now, I've got one to go and the lid. Here's the final view, the valve's still wrapped in plastic down the bottom, I've just trimmed it off with a bit of concrete. Uh, I thought it was going to take me a lot longer, but it took about four hours to, get right, to put in all the risers, all the rings, and do the top and mix the concrete for the top. Not so bad really. Um, hopefully, hopefully if there's a flood, it'll work. <laughs> so just to finish it up, I've put on a concrete ring on the top with the concrete lid. It's removed at the moment and I've put a bit of gravel around just to tidy it up you need to be able to access it so I didn't want to concrete it in too much there's a bit of concrete under it and this is what flows into it a few pipes from the house drains from the garden 
all into a 6 inch pipe and then into this double chamber anti-flood valve.